How can you tell that there's a traitor in your pack? It could be somebody in your friendship circle, it could be a colleague in your workspace, it could be a classmate, a schoolmate, it could even be a relative. Today we're talking about the traits of a traitor. And I want to shine the spotlight on one of those who was in the kitchen cabinet of our Lord. This is Judas Iscariot. Of course, we are a few days leading up to Easter, and I think about Judas as one of those who would be described as a traitor. In fact, he wears that as a badge. Sadly, that has become the thing by which he's most known. And Judas is someone that I would describe in this way. He kisses you on the cheek, he stabs you in the back, he sells you in the dark. And that's a nice way of capturing the toxic traits of this traitor. Toxicity is something we've talked about a lot, quite a bit in our generation. And toxicity is about lack of health. When we talk about a toxic culture, when we do those experiments in biology, that which was toxic was that which, after the experiment, would be shown not to be healthy. It didn't, it didn't carry forth the, the, you know, the culture of health. And some of us in our friendship circles, in our associations with others, we have let in traitors, we've let in toxic people, people who will kiss us on the cheek. And so that's all about flattery. That's all about public appearances. They may appear that they are for you. And I wonder if you have those kinds of people in your kitchen cabinet, or you are one who's gone through that kind of thing. You've gone full circle. They've kissed you on the cheek, stabbed you in the back, and then they've sold you in the dark. They've maligned you. Basically, what that is all about is these are people who, on the one hand, they flatter you, but behind the scenes, they are working for your destruction. They are the ones who are basically maligning your name. They are character assassinators. They're the ones who will slander your person. These are the ones who I would describe as traitors. And it would be all the more sad if you're the one who's guilty of that kind of behavior. I want to read something that Solomon talks about. He says that the righteous leads a, 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 a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. And before that, he talks about many a man claims to have unfaithful love, but a faithful man who can find. Those words are poignant words, powerful words. A faithful friend who can find. A faithful colleague who can find. My prayer is that God would give you wisdom, God would give you discernment, and I'm not talking about being hyper-vigilant, basically labeling people, labeling that one toxic, and another one looking at them and saying, you're a Judas, or you're a sheep, a wolf hiding in sheep's clothing. I'm not talking about going into overdrive and hyper-vigilance and labeling everyone. No, no, no. I'm talking about shining the spotlight on ourselves and asking ourselves whether we are that faithful man that Solomon talked about. Because the faithful man will not kiss you on the cheek, stab you in the back, sell you in the dark. A faithful man has your back. They are looking out for your back. They have you in their corner. And they are basically looking out for your best interests. And I pray that uh, you would have those kinds of people around you. You would be able to grow in terms of your discernment. And you'd be able to tell when someone has those traits of a traitor. But more than that, you'd be able to tell when those traits seem to be rising up in you and that betrayal kind of tendency is rising up in you and that you would keep it in check, you would nail it to the cross, you'd keep it laid down on the altar and allow the Lord to mold you to become that kind of person who is described in Proverbs a faithful man who can find. I pray that you be that kind of person. God bless you.